Hey, hello, welcome to Chemistry and Two. Well, in this particular video, I'm going to discuss a few things about your jobs, about your careers, or the path which you can choose after your graduation. Now, many a times I get many messages on my social handle. What are the different options? Where can I go? Which option should be the best? Whether teaching is best? Whether professorship is best? Let me tell you one thing, frankly, guys. I cannot tell you. I cannot help you out in choosing the best uh, uh, the career for you because that's something which you have to decide, which suits you, which career do you want, or where you want to see yourself after 15 years or after 10 years. Well, what I can help or where I can help you is in giving you or showing you multiple options which are available after your graduation okay so this is going to be a short video where I'm not going to discuss in detail about the different different or the different different options I'm just going to show you where you can go which way to go that you will have to decide now once you are in your graduation after graduation so you have got three different options the first option is you leave chemistry you are not interested in chemistry and you can opt for jobs okay if your family situation don't allow you to study for further so you what you can do you can just just after your graduation you can apply or you can get get in search for jobs now the first way to get job is after your graduation do your b ed and get into school as a teacher so that's the one of the best and the easiest way you can do now what will be the salary you all know what's the salary for a teacher in school the second option is after your graduation after your bsc you can directly go in uh, co in companies pharma companies or or analytical companies or any other company which is which is dealing with chemicals or chemical companies and you can get into job now let me tell you one thing very frankly if you get into companies after your graduation the salary will not be that high so don't expect a uh, salaries in 50000 or lakhs if you are if you are getting into a, a chemical company or a pharmaceutical company after your graduation obviously as a fresher the maximum salary that you can get after your graduation will be somewhere around 10000 to 25000 somewhere between 10000 to 25000 okay the next option which is after your graduation since if if you are not interested in continuing chemistry in your masters you don't want to do your masters and you want a job you can opt for government job like like upsc state service commission state public service commission just like i stay in maharashtra so you I have got Maharashtra Public Service Commission. So if you are from Haryana, so you will be having Haryana Public Service Commission. If you are from Tamil Nadu, so you will be having Tamil Nadu Public Service Commission. You have got SSC, you have got CDS, you have got ISRO, you have got BARC. So there are many vacancies in ISRO. There are many vacancies in BARC, which which are for graduation students. As a graduate with a degree of graduation, you can apply for them. Okay. So I'm not getting into the details of UPSC. What will be the syllabus? How you need to prepare? What are the subjects? What are the topics? Probably I will be making a separate video where I can, I can guide you about UPSC that's Union Public Service Commission for IAS IPS now let me tell you one thing more importantly UPSC do not only conduct two examinations that's for IAS and IPS which are commonly like usually students think that UPSC is only for IAS and IPS there are many other examination conducted by UPSC and there are many other post which you can apply for after appearing for UPSC so just think about UPSC do a bit of research on UPSC and try to find out what are different different possibilities or what are different posts where you can apply with your graduation degree where you have got chemistry as your specialization now many a time students are not interested getting into job after their graduation now for all those students who are interested in chemistry and they want chemistry they want to continue chemistry in their future so what you can do the first option that I can give you is appear for integrated MSc and PhD now there are many research institutes in India like IISC Bangalore, JNCASR, ICER, IISER and there are many other institutes which offer integrated MSc PhD that is you complete your masters and you complete your PhD from one institute so uh, directly after your graduation you get into that institute obviously for getting into that institute you will have to qualify a competitive exam that's called as IIT exam so if you qualify this competitive exam IIT exam you can directly get into integrated MSc PhD so you don't have to worry about now for at least five years you will be in that particular institute and your masters and PhD will be completed from that one particular institute and I think so that's a good idea for all those people who are not interested for getting into job who don't want to go abroad who want to stay in India and who want to complete their PhD the best way that I can tell you is appear for IIT exam get a good score keep your score all India rank keep your all India rank below 1000 or below at least 15, 1500 and then appear for integrated MSc PhD in any of the institute now for more risk for more details on this I will be making a separate video from where you can do integrated MSc and PhD but just 
in this particular video i can give you a hint that this is all this can also be one of the best option where you complete your masters and phd from one institute itself you won't have to jump from one institute to another institute for phd appear for phd entrance test and then and then arrange for your scholarship then arrange for your stipend doing masters and phd from one institute saves a lot of your time your energy and you get into good contact with your professors okay the next way is after graduation you can opt for regular msc now when i mean regular msc there are two types of regular msc either you can go for cream institutes like iits or nits or you can do it from central universities or you can do it from your normal uh, state universities okay you have got many state universities as i did my masters from mumbai university so you can do it from state universities okay that's one of the option it doesn't matter from where you are doing obviously it does matter from where you are doing your masters uh, the university often matters a lot but what after masters you can do you know just try to uh, complete your masters from any of the institute iits nit central university state university delhi university banaras hindu university or hyderabad university if you go towards south you have got many good universities from south you have got many good universities in the east that's your tejpur university okay you can complete your masters from any of the institute now after your masters you can either apply again for government jobs now there are two ways of applying for government jobs few people what they decide you know they go for government job after their graduation after they complete their graduation few students wants to complete their masters and then get into the government jobs and that's this now will it make a difference well basically honestly speaking it won't make a difference because the eligibility criteria for upsc and state service commission and ssc and cds is that you should minimum have a graduation degree but why people prefer masters and that get into it because this will help them in their optional subject you know when you apply for a upsc you have got an optional subject just like if you are from chemistry and you apply for upsc you can take chemistry as your optional subject so if you are doing your masters from chemistry obviously it's going to help you in your optional subject when you write your upsc examination so few students they wait for msc they complete their masters and then they get into the government jobs obviously after masters many other options are open just like you can apply for scientific officer you can apply for uh, uh, you can apply for uh, geo scientist you can apply for uh, let us say pollution control board so many government jobs few government jobs require only graduation that's your graduation and let me tell you 90% of your government jobs in india they require graduation as the minimum qualification but few government jobs they require masters as the minimum qualification so if you are opting for those jobs which require masters so obviously we'll have to complete masters and what will be the difference in the payment well i let me tell you one thing frankly there won't be much huge difference like it it will be somewhere around 10000 15000 or 25000 okay obviously the there will be a difference in the post now the next option that you have is you can apply for csir net now csir net is a competitive exam which you can give during your masters or after your masters now once you qualify csir net either you can apply for a professorship that's your lecturership assistant professorship in one any of its government college throughout india and it's a permanent government job or either you can go for phd but the criteria for doing phd is that in your csir net you should qualify jrf that's junior research fellowship okay so Uh, CSIR net is a 200 marks examination so there are two cut off a lower cut off and a higher cut off the lower cut off is for professorship and a higher cut off is for phd so if you qualify jrf through csir net you can do your phd from any institute in india from iits from nits from icel from uh, ncl that's national chemical laboratory and you will be paid a amount for doing phd that's that's your stipend okay you will be paid somewhere around 30000 to 35000 as a stipend so that you can survive during your phd for your food for your accommodation for your traveling for any any other stuff okay so doing phd from any other institute like iits after your csir net is also a good option now many students they appear for csir net as well as they appear for gate now gate is an examination if you qualify gate you have got two option either you can opt for phd in india but that too only in iits so if you qualify gate you can do your phd from iits and if you qualify gate the other option is you can apply for public sector units now there are many institute like barc they accept gate score for doing phd there are many programs which are run by barc okay so they accept gate score for giving you either scientific officer job or for allowing you to do phd from barc okay that's baba atomic research center brc so gate is also a good option so once you qualify your masters once you pass your master you can go for csir net and gate gate 
so if you qualify both of them you have got multiple option either you can go for PhD in any of the institute you can do PhD from IITs you can apply for public sector units you can do PhD from BARC you can do apply for professorship job in any of the college throughout India degree college I'm not speaking about junior college it's for degree college graduation and post graduation now many a time students they do not qualify CSIR net and gate okay in case just like me I haven't qualified CSIR net and gate so what else what else I can do I want to do PhD but I don't have JRF I don't have gate you can do your PhD from your own expenditure that's self-funded PhD now self-funded PhD is bit expensive all the expense during your PhD will be will be taken by you you will have to bear all those expenses all those traveling the Institute the professor will not provide you any stipend or any funding in case the professor gets some funding he may give you some funding they get fundings from few companies so you may be given some stipend but that totally depends upon the professor wherever you are working so self-funded PhD can also be one of the options that you can look around the next option is in case if you haven't qualified CSIR net you are not interested in government jobs and you haven't qualified gate you can go for PhD from abroad now this is something which is very common for students for all the students who are doing their masters from IITs and NITs or other cream institutes in India they often prefer PhD from abroad you can go to Europe you can go to America or you can say East countries to Japan South Korea you can go to New Zealand or you can go to Singapore or you can go to uh, African countries for doing your PhD doing your PhD from abroad is a really a good option but it's not it's not possible for every student so you will have to look for all the pros and cons for of doing PhD from abroad probably I'll be making a separate video about all these things that what if I do PhD from India and what if I do PhD from abroad what's the difference between doing a PhD from India and abroad and probably that may help you to decide whether you should go for abroad or you should wait in India and complete your PhD from India obviously I cannot speak about all those things in this particular video the next option that I have for you is after completing your masters in case if you are not interested for government jobs you haven't qualified CSIR net you are not interested for doing a PhD but still you are interested for teaching so what you can do you can you can appear for B.A. you can qualify B.A. just complete your B.A. that's a two years or three years degree right now it right now it's a two year degree for two years go for a B.A. get your B.A. degree and then you can apply as a teacher in CBSC college ICSC college your junior college that is 11th and 12th standard and if you qualify few more examination like CTET or TET teaching eligibility test you can apply for government jobs in uh, uh, you know there are many government uh, schools or there are many military schools there are army schools you can apply so after masters if you do BA there are many options which will be available for you people for teaching line but probably that will be not for degree college it will be up to 12th standard okay up to your junior college so if you want to be a professor in degree college obviously you will have to qualify CSIR net the the minimum requirement for getting into degree college as a professor is you will have to qualify for CSIR net now if in case you are not interested in CSIR net or any of these options you don't want to do PhD you don't want to do BA you are not into teaching you are not interested in teaching line you don't want to go abroad so the best way is you can apply for private jobs there are many pharmaceutical companies there are many companies as I told you before that after your graduation also you can apply for companies and after your masters also you can apply for these companies but let me tell you one thing really frankly and this is the bitter truth right now the jobs are limited or you can say even there are good jobs available in paint industries in pharmaceutical industries in chemical industries but the salary is not what you will expect if your expectation is that you will be getting a 50,000 or 60,000 or a 1 lakh salary after your masters because you completed masters which is the second highest qualification right now available in in country after PhD it's the second highest call or you can say third highest postdoc PhD and then you have got masters but let me tell you that the bitter truth is don't expect a very high paying job after your masters if you want to get into your private jobs that is your pharmaceutical company so what I have usually seen right now is many students after completing their masters they also apply for MBA they also apply for MBA that is one of the option another option is after completing your masters you get get into teaching line that's your uh, corporate teaching line I call it as corporate teaching line that is your 11 12 JE need it's your quota and there are many other coaching institutes throughout India which hire students who have completed their masters so if you are masters if you have completed your masters and if in case you are from any good institute like IIT and IIT and in case if you have cracked any of the competitive exams like JAM or JE or need 
or if you have any good rank in any of the competitive exams you can get into teaching line which is right now a promising field there are many online platforms available there are many coaching industry there are many coaching classes available the coaching industry in itself is a big industry where there's always a need for new teachers young teachers dynamic teachers so after completing your masters you can go for teaching line that's a that's another option which i did in my life after my masters i got into teaching line and today right now i'm associated with few online platforms i have got my own youtube channel i teach in offline coaching classes i teach i teach je or need students and i prepare them for je and need so that's one of the option which you can have in case if you don't qualify for any of the competitive exams or you don't want to go for a government job you don't want to do phd from your abroad so all these are the options that you have got and that i have listed now in case if you are interested to know more about any of the field you want to know more about phd from abroad phd from india csir net i i have already made a video about csir net which you can see uh, the link will be given in the description box if you want to know more about integrated masters and phd from one institute you want to know more about upsc or i won't be able to give you more detail about ssc cds but if you want to know more about upsc syllabus the pros and cons the things that you need to know before uh, going for upsc i may make separate video so just put up your comment in the comment box and if i like any of the topic probably i'll be making a video and i may discuss in detail what are the things that you need to keep in your mind before uh, taking any any uh, of these option as your career and in case if you like this video please do share this video with your friends with your teachers uh, in your whatsapp group so that there are many other students who still need awareness who are not aware with all those things so probably they may be benefited by this video till then bye bye take care and god bless you all